How's it going everybody? It's Pilot Flame and we are back with another FPL video and today we're redoing our weekly rendition of buy, hold and sell. For those that are new to it, it's basically players that I think that you should buy this game week, players that I think you should hang on to for an extra game week, and players in which I think you should sell. We do this every week so we kind of check to see how we did in the previous week and then we do our buy, hold and sell for the players going into the next game week this game week being game week 36 plus so without further ado let's check out the players so looking back at game week 35 plus we obviously did quite well for the buys you know jamie vardy obviously getting a goal and a bonus point is quite good nick pope could have potentially had a clean sheet he could have had four points if you hadn't picked up a yellow card for uh, time wasting in the liverpool game and it would have been a very good you know just pick overall because he does have you know three good remaining fixtures vardy is a bit different this week you'll see where he is on our list as well spoiler alert and you know i think that he could potentially be leaving a lot of people's teams. Maybe just a one-off. I was considering it myself. It may be more confirmed this week based on what happened in the Bournemouth versus Leicester game. For the holds, we had Mane and Foster. Obviously, Foster got the same amount of points as Pope, so he's technically good for one more fixture, but he is up against the mighty Antonio, so he might concede four there. So it might be time to potentially get rid of him. But it was a decent hold. You know, he, he basically got the same amount of points as Nick Pope. So not too bad there with three points, which is around average or slightly above average for a goalkeeper uh, game to game. And then Mane was obviously somewhat unlucky not to score. Same as Salah, obviously only receiving two points in game week 35 versus Burnley. I think that you should probably still keep them though, because Arsenal is a good fixture on paper. Even Chelsea is leaking goals. And then Newcastle is a team that's probably going to sit back and just give Liverpool the ball anyway. Both teams really don't have much to fight for. They're not both not in the FA Cup and they're both safe and Liverpool's already won the league. So it may just be more of an exhibition thing. So maybe get rid of them then. But still some good fixtures to come. I think it was definitely a the right choice, even though he didn't return and then for the cells this is where we've had an absolute nightmare Raul Jimenez getting one more point than Jamie Vardy this week getting a goal and two bonus points although he didn't do too much in the game he did get a penalty which is obviously something to kind of consider I'm not sure if Jao Matinho was on the field at the time I wasn't able to watch the game However, if he is on penalties, that could be something to kind of look forward to potentially in future games. But overall, I think Everton were just, uh, you know, from what I was told, it seemed to be just that bad. And I think that, you know, I think it was the right thing to sell him. He may not get any more returns this season. And he's probably going to miss a game coming up, like we've mentioned before, because his wife is expecting a child. And I think, obviously, Vardy only getting one less point than he was. There was more upsides to Vardy in the Bournemouth game, but we didn't think that, you know, Leicester would kind of capitulate in that sort of manner. And then lastly, obviously, Hyunmin Son here. We have, you know, he's got 13 points. What can I say? I think my last five transfers or six transfers, five of them have gone on to score. So I got rid of Martial. He got outscored by Pogba. I got uh, De Bruyne in for, I'm trying to remember who it was. De Bruyne for Salah. Salah scores a brace assist. Got rid of uh, um, Son for Sterling, although Sterling did get a hat trick, but Son still returned. So not very good in the selling department uh, this time. But overall, I think it was just kind of a formation shift that allowed for this for him and Son to get those points. He was playing as a front two. Now, I'm not sure if Mourinho is going to keep that shape, but I think it definitely benefits the likes of Son and Mora. And you kind of put Sissoko out on the right-hand side as well, where he can just use his pace, his energy, and his strength to kind of hold off fullbacks from overlapping and whatnot. And I think that it's just a better system for Spurs. Do they keep using that going forward? Maybe reconsider, but... Most likely, we're not going to be bringing them back in just because Spurs don't look that great. Like, they don't look that explosive offensively. So, let's check out the buys for this week. So, our first buy for the week is Antonio. He obviously had a massive game week, scoring four goals in the game versus Norwich. He could have potentially had more as well. And he seems to be just that talisman figure that West Ham need in order to stay up. He's only $7 million, but he does fall on in the midfield slot. So, it may be kind of something is like, do I get rid of Pulisic? Am I going to have three Man City midfielders, which means I probably need two United midfielders as well because they've been doing good. It's really hard to kind of fit him in without kind of getting rid of other players that also potentially look good as well. Like a lot of people are bringing in Pulisic this week specifically because he plays Norwich. So it could be something there. In the last games that he's played, I believe his last three games, he's had 19 shots, 19 
That's insane. That's like seven shots a game. And 17 of those are inside the box. He had five goals, obviously four coming in one game. He said one of six and six key passes. So he could have had a lot more points for assists going forward if those key passes go to the right players and they put them in the back of the net. And his last two out of three fixtures are quite good. He has Watford at home as well as Aston Villa at home, sandwiched in between a game versus Manchester United. And I think that you know, scoring four goals in one game where he could have potentially had more points just seems ridiculous to kind of think on paper. But I think he is a very good asset going forward. I wish I could bring him in, but unfortunately I would have to get rid of somebody in the midfield that I wouldn't otherwise want to. So I have three City midfielders and two Man United midfielders, all of which I want to keep at the moment. And it's just going to be pretty tough. Next season he'll be a forward, so maybe could potentially be good value there but we'll definitely have to see but I think Antonio if you can get him in this week for the remaining three fixtures I think he's a fantastic buy and the other player we have on our buy list is Olivier Giroud now I think he's kind of you know goes unsung for Chelsea in my opinion since the restart he started four times all of the games in which they've won and the games in which they've lost he hasn't started in those two games so and I think he's just a facilitator that you know, allows for the likes of Pulisic and Willian to kind of play freely and kind of have more free roles, swapping wings and kind of getting inside the box more. And, and Giroud's very good at that. We've seen what he can do for France in the World Cup as well. And he kind of is more the, the target man, knocks it down, lays it off to one of these guys and they put it in the back of the net. So I think that Giroud could be getting more assists, you know, going forward as well. But he does tend to take a decent amount of shots inside the box. And in those starts that he has had, He's taken 11 shots, nine of which are inside the box. He's had three goals in those four starts, and the only one that he didn't get a goal in was versus Manchester City, which is kind of understandable, and they won the game anyway. So, And then I think he's just going to be a key differential. So a lot of people are going to be going for Pulisic or Willian this week. I think Giroud could be a cheaper asset. He's also a forward position in the game, so it could be one of those things where you have a tight midfield like I do. So I have three city midfielders, which I don't want to get rid of going into this game week, as well as the two Manchester United midfielders, which I don't want to get rid of as well. And I think that Giroud could provide good value there. I'm still kind of debating in my head and I'll probably discuss more of it on our live stream, but I think he could be a great asset. And if you're pairing him up with Pulisic or William as well, it could be a great sword pick because a lot of people are going to be bringing in Pulisic, which is going to be more of a shield because he's going to be quite high owned and as well as captain. But Giroud in combination with Pulisic could provide for a great value combo there. Moving on to the holds this week, the players which I think that you should hang on to for at least another game week, and Pulisic is definitely on that list. He has a very good fixture versus Norwich, and obviously a solid double up, as we mentioned, with Olivier Giroud, especially if we get the beautiful early team news that some people tend to leak out a few minutes before kickoff. And if we see both Olivier Giroud and Pulisic starting, it'd be, you know, be more inclined for people to captain him as well as bring him into their teams as a last-minute transfer. He's always active, he's always driving at the defense, and he just kind of, you know, he kind of manifests himself in the light of like KDB for Manchester City in, in Chelsea's team. He's Mr. Consistent. He's going to get you a goal. The next game, he might get you an assist or two. The next game, he might get assist and a goal. You know, he's always chipping him with points. And in the first game against Sheffield United that they lost 3-0 and was the first game he actually hasn't had a return in any of the games so which is you know it's quite good you know he said it'd been a quite good vein of form and even in that game where they did play you know quite badly he still had two shots inside the box and i do expect chelsea to kind of bounce back going into this game week and the other player we have on our hold list is Liverpool's Trent Alexander-Arnold. Now, he was rested in their previous game versus Burnley and only came on and got one point, which is, you know, not, not the end of the world. It's not, not fantastic either, but I do think that going forward in the next three fixtures, he could easily pick up points. The remaining fixtures are Arsenal, Chelsea, and Newcastle to end the season, all of which where he could potentially get returns from deep crossing or set plays, as all those teams aren't as good. Newcastle probably the strongest out of the three to be perfectly honest but clean sheets are also not out of the question as Liverpool has a very formidable defense with 14 clean sheets this season and if we could take anything from the likes of Robertson being rested where he comes on and scores a goal almost won a penalty for Liverpool in the Burnley game and just looking very very active with his crosses and and just just up and down the wing the entire game who knows what Trent can do so I think he'll be back back firing as normal 
And especially with Arsenal coming off a very bad loss versus Spurs, their North London rivals, I think that Liverpool is even more statistically favored in this matchup as they have been over the past few seasons. And with Arsenal just being very leaky at the back, especially obviously conceding to a corner in the 2-1 loss versus Spurs, I think that Trent's delivery could provide as a specialty here for Liverpool versus Arsenal. And lastly, his deep crosses have proven, you know, quite effective against most teams and more so Arsenal as well because the likes of David Luiz and, and Scott Jordan Mustafi are quite slow in terms of reaction time. And I think that Trent's deep crossings could pick them out quite easily. They might not be ready for it and we might see a return from him and getting back to his normal high scoring points for the 7.8 million defender. First up on our sell list here is Harry Kane. Now he's had three blanks in three games and he just seems to go quite missing in games. He, he doesn't seem quite up to the pace. He may be a little bit better going into next season, but the fixtures obviously don't favor him either. And I think that Son and Lucas Moore are just more of the ones getting more involved in the game. He did have a few shots against Arsenal, but again, their defense obviously isn't great. And in the previous two games before that, he had very little shots in those games. It just doesn't seem very involved. And like we mentioned with the fixtures, Newcastle away will be tough for Spurs to break down as you know he's a Mourinho in a Mourinho side and Mourinho's team typically isn't very good versus low block teams, which Newcastle will do. Leicester will want to obviously bounce back from their game versus Bournemouth and they will be fighting for top four. And then Crystal Palace could just prove to be kind of that banana peel at the very end of the season in order for Tottenham to get back into Europa League or vying for a Champions League spot if they're in that position to do so. Kane does work better, however, in the system that Mourinho deployed versus Arsenal in a 4-4-2, but I'm not sure if Mourinho will keep that formation. He does tend to tinker with things. He does tend to kind of set his team out in a 4-2-3-1 in most cases, and Kane just kind of drops deeper, facilitating, like I said, for the left and right wingers. And he just just seem like you said he just drops too deep for my liking he doesn't seem to be involved as in like getting in the box or staying in the box and letting the likes of Lacelso and Son and Mora do more of like the the groundwork and he just gets inside the box and just does what he does best which is finish and he also has a decent long range shot so even if he's able to pick the ball up on the edge of the box he's still quite dangerous from there but for me I think Kane is definitely a sell this week and if you were looking at a Spurs asset I would say the likes of Son and Lucas Moore will provide better value going forward. And the last player on our sell list is none other than Jamie Vardy. Now, I want you to hear me out on this one because you're probably thinking, Pilot, what are you talking about? Jamie Vardy has six goals in the last three games. He, you brought him into your team for this week. You captained him. You even used a triple captain on him. He's the leading you know, goal scorer for the Golden Boot this year. How can you possibly get rid of him? Hear me out on this one. So there's a couple of reasons why I think this is potentially something you should be looking into the first reason is that the team has had major injuries so madison's been out for a few games all brighton was substituted due to an injury and brought on brought off the field rather for the likes of brian bennett and they played more of the wingback system there secondly soyanchu is now suspended for the remainder of the season as he received a straight red in the bournemouth game after they conceded their second goal so that could also make them more defensively frail, which means Vardy could have the ball less often when he is playing, you know, to try and get behind. And I think that Soyuncu also provides good stability alongside the likes of Johnny Evans, and they can play the ball out from the back and have that chemistry, whereas now they're going to have to basically work without him which could lead to less of a supply going forward. And then after Leicester made that mistake, specifically just the second half onwards, Vardy hardly touched the ball and he had registered zero shots in the second half as well. Also, another reason why I think that you could potentially get rid of Vardy is that most people are transitioning or haven't or have done so already really to a 3-5-2 formation. Now that only leaves two spots in the starting rotation, excluding bench boost players, for two forwards so you have the likes of Gabriel Jesus who has Bournemouth and Norwich in his last three games you have Mason Greenwood who's just been on fire you have Danny Ings who has Brighton and Bournemouth himself in the next two game weeks and I think he could potentially score in the last three fixtures just overall because he's just been that good and lastly Leicester has three tough fixtures as well you know he has in inform Sheffield United next does Vardy then he has the annoying just Mourinho team in Spurs where they're gonna not give any space in behind and then he has Man United which it could already be out of his hands at that point and maybe not as motivated to potentially you know go out and 
you know perform you know as well as he could and like i mentioned with the three five two you can only fit two of those forwards in there so if you have jesus in there you already have mason green on your team then who are you going to play going into game week 36 plus? I'm playing Jesus and Greenwood if I have those two players. I'm definitely not playing Vardy. And I'm not sacrificing one of my you know City midfielders or Man United midfielders or Antonio who just scored four for Vardy to go up against a Sheffield United team that just slapped Chelsea 3-0. So I think it could be something where you potentially could rotate him out for the likes of Danny Ings, for the likes of Jesus, for the likes of Mason Greenwood, even the likes of Giroud for a one-week punt or to get Danny Ings in for the remaining three fixtures. And another thing to note as well is Ian Acho came off at halftime. And once halftime ended and the second half started, Vardy didn't have any more shots and hardly touched the ball. So I think Vardy just might overall be suffering for the rest of the season, which could potentially cost him the golden boot, although he does have quite a decent cushion at the top. But again, in three games, anything is possible. But I think Vardy could potentially be on the chopping block for this game week. And that's going to do it for this week's rendition of Buy, Hold, and Sell for Game Week 36+. Plus. Make sure to leave a comment down below as to who you are potentially buying for this game week. Players that you're looking to kind of hang on to, maybe are debating whether you should keep them or not. And players which you are just getting rid of them because you just can't send them anymore. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. And make sure to turn those notification bells on in order to get the content as soon as it is readily available. We also have Twitter and Twitch. It's PilotFlame226 as well on those platforms. Twitter is where we post our new videos as well as just general predictions from our gaming discussions, which we do over on Twitch. And we'll be doing one after the Manchester United game today at around 7 p.m. EST. Time is still a bit tentative, but it's going to be around there. And we put a tweet out when we are about to go live. So make sure to follow us on those platforms. And that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys are all having a good game week. Hopefully the Manchester United players help your game week along if you have them as well. And until the next video, take care.